if we breathe hard, we're getting rid of a gas carbon dioxide. Okay, that's normal because we're getting rid of it from the lungs, from the blood through the lungs. Your CO2 in your lungs determines your CO2 in the blood. You breathe hard, you get rid of CO2 in the lungs, you get rid of CO2 in the blood. You get rid of CO2 in your blood, what happens to your blood vessels? They constrict. They constrict. The harder you breathe, the more your blood vessels constrict. You have, does anybody know how many blood vessels, how many miles of blood vessels are there in the human body? Does anybody know? There's a hundred thousand miles of blood vessels in the human body. If you breathe hard, you're affecting all of that. Hard breathers are cold hands, brain fog, and reduced productivity. And also, the harder you breathe, if it's shutting down blood vessels, the heart is getting less blood flow. Hard breathing, less blood flow throughout the body. If you really slow down your breathing, CO2 increases. How do you know that CO2 increases? You know that CO2 increases because you feel air hunger. When you felt the air hunger, that was not because your oxygen was dropping. Your oxygen would have been the same. In actual fact, your oxygen wouldn't have changed by all that much. But you felt the need to breathe, and the need to breathe was driven by the slight increase of carbon dioxide. So here's the ironic thing. You're slowing down your breath, carbon dioxide is increasing, and even though you feel that you're not getting enough air, your blood vessels are dilating your improved circulation. Does that make sense? Now the other thing is, you slow down your breath. How does your mouth go when you get stressed? Does it go wet or dry? Dry. So if we activate the stress response, the sympathetic nervous system, we get a dry mouth. Well, within three minutes of slowing down, that's all you did it for maybe three, four minutes, you experience increased water, moist water in the mouth. And this is a sign that it's activation of the parasympathetic nervous system or the body's relaxation response. We can bring the body from sympathetic into parasympathetic within three to four minutes from slowing down the breath. Now here's another thing. So we're talking about slow breathing. Opens up your blood vessels, activates the relaxation response, but it's slow breathing to get air hunger. That is the key. Air hunger is the key. Slow breathing on its own is brilliant anyway, but let's go one little step further. Why do we want to get air hunger? Because we want to reset the respiratory center in the brain towards a higher set point of carbon dioxide. And then your breathing is slow all the time. Does that make sense? You think of modern life. What's it doing to our breathing? It's increasing it. Stress. How do you breathe when you get stressed? Your breathing gets faster or slower? Faster. faster. If you get stressed, shallow, it's upper chest. Do you sigh more or do you sigh less if you're stressed? You sigh more, you get frustrated, you start sighing. So you have a regular breathing. You'll often hear your breathing during stress, you mouth breathe, and you, do you breathe more or breathe less when you're stressed? You breathe more. Now, some people do hold their breath, but actually holding the breath may be a compensation for the breathing more before that. This is stress breathing. But how about you breathe like this all the time? What's it doing to the body? Keeping it in a state of stress. Many people fall into this pattern. In the functional movement screen, it was 50 to 60% would have fell into this category. Stress breathing, but stress breathing all the time. That's what modern life is doing. Talking, processed foods, stress, lack of exercise, and also, we have a belief that it's good to take big breaths. How many of you have heard the instruction, take a deep breath? Show me a deep breath. Can you demonstrate it as a group? That's it, isn't it? Isn't that how it's 
Was that a big breath? Was that like a big sigh? Was it like a big sigh? Yeah? Look down at your chest and do it again. Take a deep breath. Was it upper chest? Did you increase the speed of it? Could you hear it? Yeah, you're breathing through your nose. You're enlightened. This is a different group. Generally, it's a few, generally there's a few mouth breathers there. But you're breathing more. What would happen if you kept taking that deep breath? How would your head feel? Light. Your head, you feel lightheaded. You feel dizzy. So is that a sign? What's that saying to us? You're feeling lightheaded because what is the deep breathing doing? Getting rid of carbon dioxide. How much? Every one millimeter drop of CO2 reduces blood flow to the brain by 2%. And that was published in a paper by McGarry and the paper is called Hyperventilation, a diagnosis begging for recognition. Begging for recognition. Um, and it's very difficult to quantify what is the, the percent of the population in this. One paper from 1982 says that 10% of every patient going into general practitioner's surgery has got breathing pattern disorders. And it's their breathing pattern disorder that's feeding into the symptoms, the reason that the patient is there in the first place. So it's very common and it's very overlooked. People with anxiety can have up to 50% reduction of oxygen to the brain by virtue of chronic overbreathing. Okay, so that's one of the functions of carbon dioxide. The harder you breathe, the more your blood vessels constrict. If you've got cold hands, generally a bit of a sign, yeah? Brain fog. How many of you sleep with an open mouth all night? You're breathing hard and you wake up very tired. Well, there's a situation that you've breathed a lot of air. So it, technically, you've breathed a lot of oxygen, which you should wake up alert, but you don't. You wake up exhausted. You wake up exhausted because the hard breathing has got rid of CO2. But you also wake up exhausted because the airways are more likely to collapse during sleep caused by mouth breathing. Snoring and obstructive sleep apnea significantly increase when we breathe through our mouth versus breathing through our nose. Okay, another aspect. So how would we bring the body from stress into relaxation? Instead of breathing faster, we need to breathe slow. Now it makes sense, doesn't it? Instead of upper chest breathing, we want to breathe using the diaphragm. Instead of sighing, we want to achieve regular breathing. Instead of hearing our breathing during rest, we want to have silent breathing. Instead of breathing through the mouth, through the nose. And instead of breathing more, we want to practice breathing less. We practice breathing less for periods of time during the day to reset the brain towards more functional breathing patterns. This is what we address. This is what we teach. Exactly, that's what we teach, yeah? So everything on this page here is included in the Breathe Light exercise. And the whole purpose of this is not just an exercise that you'll practice for a few minutes here and a few minutes there. The whole purpose of this exercise is to change your everyday breathing. People who have poor everyday breathing are continuously stuck there. We want to change this. If you change your everyday breathing, your blood vessels, your blood circulations are better, your mental state is better, your sleep is better, and your oxygen delivery is better.